Hi, hello, and if you're new to the channel, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. In this video, I want to look at the problem of humidity on a narrowboat and how humidity can lead to condensation and how condensation can lead to the growth of mold. Okay, this may seem like a boring subject. And when I do a technical video, things like my electrics or battery video or my nature videos on the toads, for example, my subscriber and view numbers plummet. But stick with me, this is important stuff. It's not as dry, pun intended, a subject as you may think. In fact, if you've watched any narrowboat videos on YouTube, the chances are you have already encountered people talking about the problems they have on board their boats with mold and condensation. Honestly, I may be wittering on, but this is important stuff. So in this video, I'm going to look at what is humidity and what we mean by relative humidity. And then I will explore how the dew point plays into this problem. Along the way, I will look at why it gets so humid on boats, and a big clue to that is just outside the window, the canal, and what we do on board boats that cause an increase in the level of humidity. Then I'll explore what we can do to try and keep our boats dry and less humid. So, first up, what is humidity? Humidity is just the amount of water vapor that is in the air. And on the narrow boat, we've got many, many sources of that water vapor. There is the canal outside, and then there are things that we do on board, such as boiling the kettle, cooking, even breathing. All of that produces humidity. The clearest indication of humidity is, for example, when you're making a cup of tea and you see the steam coming out of the kettle. The steam is humidity. It's just water vapor. And if you've got a device on your boat that sort of tells you the temperature and tells you the relative humidity, you'll know that it changes. So here, for example, it's 9.2, 9.3 degrees centigrade and 83% relative humidity on my boat. Is that humid? Is 83% relative humidity humid? OK, some maths, but stick with me, as this explains why relative humidity on our boats changes and why understanding relative humidity can help us keep our boats dry and mould free. So what is relative humidity? Well, relative humidity is just the amount of water vapour in the air divided by the maximum amount of water vapour that the air can hold at that temperature, multiplied by 100. And if we change the amount of water vapour that's in the air, or we change the temperature, so we change the maximum amount of water vapour the air can hold, we change our relative humidity. And when relative humidity hits 100%, we get formation of the dreaded condensation on board our narrowboats. And an important thing to note here is this change in maximum amount of water the air can hold. As the temperature increases, the air can hold more water. And this is a critical factor and needs to be considered when we're thinking about condensation and mould on board our narrowboats. So, why isn't it always 100% relative humidity on our boats all the time? After all, there's a big wet canal just outside or a big wet river. What's stopping the air from being 100% saturated all the time? Well, as we've seen, the warmer the air, the more moisture it can hold. The cooler the air, the less moisture it can hold. That's why winter mornings feel crisp and dry and summer air can feel sticky and thick. When the temperature drops to a certain point, the dew point, and I'll say more about that later, the air becomes fully saturated. We hit 100% relative humidity and we get fog, dew or rain. But most of the time the temperature stays above this point, so humidity remains below 100%. Another reason humidity isn't always at 100% is air movement. Wind and weather systems constantly mix different air masses together. Some areas are drier than others, some more humid, and they're always changing and mixing. If we think about it, we've seen this in operation. If we make a cup of tea, the steam, the humidity from the tea rises, the water vapour rises into the air and forms steam. If we then blow on the tea, the steam spreads out, we disperse that humidity, that water vapour. And the same thing is happening in nature. Also, the water in the canals or the rivers is always evaporating into the air, but at the same time it's also condensing, forming clouds, fog or rain, or going straight back into the water, which you can view it condensing on the surface of the water. 
The balance between these processes prevents humidity from being 100%. Okay, so when does humidity hit 100%? Well, this happens when the air temperature drops to the dew point, like in the early morning when you see mist over the water or dew forming on the grass. It also happens inside clouds. It happens on the windows of our narrowboats. Now, besides the large body of water just outside our boat, the other major source of humidity on our boats is us and what we do. Our breath contains water, we sweat, more water is released. We cook and make tea. The act of cooking produces water as the burning of the gas produces carbon dioxide and water, plus any steam from our cooking. Hence, we're filling the insides of our boats with water vapour and raising the relative humidity, and all that water vapour has got to go somewhere. It either leaves the boats via the windows or forms condensation. So why do we get condensation? Well, it comes down to the warm air that contains a lot of water vapour coming into contact with a cold surface. And this brings me to something called the dew point. The dew point is a temperature at which, for a given amount of water vapour in the air, the air can no longer hold any more water. That is, relative humidity has hit 100% and the water starts to condense. It starts returning to its liquid state. And on our narrowboats, we find this happening on the metal surfaces and on our windows. So, let's see how this comes about. Now, if you're really interested in this and want to know the math behind it, I'll put together an explainer at the end of the video. Now, let's say it's 20 degrees centigrade inside our narrowboat with a 50% relative humidity. We know that if the relative humidity hits 100%, condensation will form. But at what temperature would that happen? Well, through a bit of maths, we can calculate the amount in grams of water per kilogram of air that the air will contain at 20 degrees centigrade and 50% relative humidity. And that comes to 7.2 grams of water per kilogram of air. The question now becomes, at what temperature is this amount of water vapour, 7.2 grams of water per kilogram of air, equivalent to 100% relative humidity? And the temperature at which we hit 100% relative humidity is the dew point. It's the temperature at which condensation, dew, will form. As we know the amount is 7.2 grams of water vapour per kilogram of air, we can do a bit of maths. And again, I'll do an explainer at the end of the video if you really want to know the maths. And it comes out that the dew point is 9 degrees centigrade. Hence, if we're at 20 degrees centigrade inside our narrowboats with a relative humidity of 50%, then condensation will form on any surface that is 9 degrees centigrade or less. If we keep the boat at 20 degrees and raise the relative humidity to 60%, then the dew point will increase to 12 degrees centigrade. So condensation will then form on any surface that is 12 degrees centigrade or less. Hence, controlling the level of relative humidity in our narrowboats becomes important. The higher the relative humidity, the higher the dew point, and the more likely it is that condensation will form. Another thing to consider is when the boat cools overnight, how the relative humidity rises because the amount of water vapour the air can hold decreases. The total amount of water vapour in the air might not change, but the relative humidity will as the maximum amount the air can hold will drop. Take a look at this graph. The graph shows that if, when I went to bed, it was 20 degrees centigrade and 50% relative humidity, and the temperature on the boat dropped to 10 degrees centigrade, the relative humidity would increase to 95%. Remember, the dew point here is 9 degrees centigrade. There's been no change in the total amount of water vapour in the air, but because the air can now hold less water vapour, the relative humidity has increased. So, what can we do to control the levels of relative humidity on board? Well, there are a number of things. One thing we can do to reduce the humidity on board is to give the boat a good airing. The idea here is you let all the warm, humid air that's inside of the boat out and replace it with cold, drier air. This is a technique that's used a lot in Germany in houses and sometimes even appears in sort of tenant's contract. And it's called Strossluften or Luften. Strossluften, please excuse my pronunciation, just basically means 
rapid ventilation. Luften just means to ventilate the property. Now, it may seem counterintuitive if it's five degrees outside, let's say, in 80% humidity, to let all your nice, warm 20-degree air at 50% humidity out of the boat. But when you sit down and do the maths, it actually is a good move because you are effectively bringing in drier air. It's got a higher relative humidity, but it contains less water. And I can show you this with a quick bit of maths, which I will post at the end of the video. Now, a lot of people say this is not a good idea. You know, you're letting all your heat out. Well, I'm not talking about sort of ventilating the boat for hours. Quick 10, 15 minutes just to change the air over. All the furnishings and all the main sort of body of the boat still stays at 20 degrees. It's just that you're swapping over the warm, humid air for drier, colder air. Because don't forget, cold air can hold less moisture overall. And this means that when the cold air heats up in the boat, it will be able to take on more moisture. So even though it may have come in at 80% humidity, relative humidity at 5 degrees centigrade, by the time it's sort of warmed back up to 20 degrees centigrade, it's a lot lower humidity. And then anything that's a bit damp in the boat can dry out because it's got that spare capacity in that air for the water to evaporate into. So... With this technique, the idea is every morning you get up and just do a quick 10 minutes with the windows and the doors open to let that cold, dry air in and get that moist, hot air out of the boat. Now, another way to dehumidify your boat is to go with either chemical or electric dehumidifiers. So what are my options for controlling dampness on the narrow boat? Well, one option are these sorts of things, which are calcium chloride containers. They come sealed with the calcium chloride dehydrated and they absorb moisture from the atmosphere. These I'm tending to use in cupboards, so they're quite small and I just sort of tuck them in a cupboard. I do leave the cupboards open when I'm away from the boat so that there is air circulation through that particular cupboard or that particular area. Another type of dehumidifier is this type. Again, it's a chemically based dehumidifier and this one is from Unibond. Now this dehumidifier has been sitting in the boatsman's cabin for about a week and has accumulated around an inch of water in the base. Basically these work by sucking moisture out of the atmosphere. It is taken in by the chemical which then dissolves and flows into the bottom container. Now the humidity in the boatsman's cabin is usually around 70 to 80 percent and that's with this dehumidifier in there. So is it really working? Is it doing a good job? It's hard to say. I used to use these in the main lounge area of the boat, but I was really dissatisfied with the level that they were bringing the humidity down. They weren't really bringing it down much at all. So that meant I had to find another solution. And this is when I invested in an electric dehumidifier. Electric dehumidifiers can be divided into two types based on how they extract moisture from the air. And the two types are compressor dehumidifiers and desiccant dehumidifiers. The compressor dehumidifier works by drawing in moist air and passing it over cold coils. Think of it working like a fridge running with the door open. The moisture condenses on the coils and then the water is collected into a tank. This type of dehumidifier are most efficient in warm, humid conditions. They're perfect for heated homes, but not so good on narrow boats as they struggle to work when the temperature drops below 15 degrees centigrade. At the temperatures typically found on board a narrow boat in winter, it is better to go with a desiccant dehumidifier, as this type of electric dehumidifier will work down to the single digit centigrade. Plus, they have the advantage of putting out warm air, which can help heat the boat. Desiccant dehumidifier, as the name suggests, use a moisture absorbing material similar to silica tail to draw the water from the air. The built-in heater then dries the material so that it can be reused. The water is then collected into a tank for disposal. Now this is the electric dehumidifier that I went with. It's a Mieko DD8L Junior and I've been very, very impressed with it. And I'm not being sponsored by them to say this. They've not paid anything. This is just my honest opinion and honest review of this particular dehumidifier. This is not a condenser dehumidifier that uses a sort of reverse fridge idea, an air conditioning idea to dehumidify, but it uses a desiccant inside that it auto renews is the easiest way to think of it. And this thing is great. 
I first tried it out at home for drying some washing and I was stunned at how much liquid it pulled out of the air in a very short space of time. It's actually got a washing mode on it. But I leave this set up in the boat with a drain line, which you can see going down into the sink. I don't normally have the bowl sitting there. And I leave this set up with my home automation system, which I'll say more about in another video, so that it switches on for certain times in the day and during the day, if the humidity drops below a certain percentage, it will automatically turn it off. However, the dehumidifier can control itself with the various settings on the top. You can set it so it turns itself off automatically when a certain percentage humidity is reached. But I've been super impressed with this device. It's made a huge difference inside the boat. I can easily control the level of humidity in the lounge area and any sort of soft furnishings that I have that are in the boatman's cabin that may be damp down there, I move up into the lounge area. So what am I using on board the Grey Wagtail? Well, as I have said, I have some of the chemical type dehumidifiers scattered around the boat, mainly in cupboards and drawers and in the boatman's cabin. In the lounge area, I've been using an electric dehumidifier. And as I said, I couldn't be more impressed with it. The electric dehumidifier has worked very well and controlling it with the automated system I've put on board has been an absolute breeze. I've been very happy with the setup and the proof that it is working is that I have no musty smell on board and the bathroom door, which had swelled before I got the dehumidifier and wouldn't close, has now returned to its original size and shape and can in fact be closed. Success. Okay, so thanks for watching for this long. In this video, I've looked at what is humidity, why boats get so humid and what we can do to reduce humidity levels on board. On the screen now, you'll see a QR code that will take you through to the Grey Wagtail newsletter. There's also a link in the description for the newsletter below this video. If you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, please give it a like. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.